All right. Hello, hello, everyone. Interesting episode here today. I'm here with Amy McManus, who is definitely one of our weirdest cases ever, health cases. And this all kind of started for me. It started for her a lot longer ago. But for me, last year, I started just online. I was telling people, contact me if you haven't gotten your result yet. And I got about 30 to 50 people who over the years had either gotten a partial result or had not really gotten any result. Kind of shot myself in the foot there because that kept me busy for the next six months. And most of them actually were pretty easy. A lot of people, you know, we got onto a Zoom and they were just missing one or two things maybe or doing one thing really wrong and it, and didn't have to hear from them again. And Amy was one of those people I, I didn't think would be that difficult. I thought we might just need to tweak something here or there, add a mega dose of something. But no, nope. she kept coming back week after week. And I, I kept seeing those emails thinking just please, please tell me that she's better. She wasn't. So we had to keep going. And first of all, I commend her. She's a great example for many people because most people would have just given up. After two, three, four, five months, definitely six months, most people are walking away. They're trying something different. And in this case, we did have to try several different things, but you got to stick with it. Let that be a lesson to anyone who is a tough case. Most people are not tough cases, by the way. Usually this business is easy. I took it for granted how easy it was. You just randomly buckshot out the 90 essential nutrients and this is fixed, that's fixed, you changed my life. Given simple diet advice, get off of gluten. Oh my gosh, I lost 40 pounds, 60 pounds. It was simple. But in this business, probably the biggest problem is arrogance, hubris, which comes with success. When you start to help a lot of people, this is in regular medicine and alternative world as well. When you start to help a lot of people, it's easy to just get caught up in the, in the good results and to ignore the bad results. But we need to study the failures and we need to figure them out. And I've learned a lot with this case here. And Amy, thank you very much for joining us. I know it's not easy necessarily to talk about this because uh, some of this stuff can be a little bit embarrassing, a little bit uncomfortable, but it's very important. I, I bet there's a lot of people who are dealing with something similar to yours. So how did this all start? Um, well, <clears throat> when COVID hit, I got fear mongered into building up my immune system. So up until that point, I, I thought I was extremely healthy. I was traveling and doing all sorts of things with um, my work and whatnot. So um, about 2021, I started really becoming symptomatic and it was at the same time that the vaccine came out. And so I thought maybe I was getting um, that spike protein runoff because a lot of my clients were coming in freshly vaccinated. So I assumed it had a lot to do with that. I was getting rashes, I was dizzy, um, I was getting just tons of uh, joint pain. I was getting harder and harder to move. I was gaining weight and I really didn't have a good reason why. And the inflammation, I was having a lot of difficulty uh, moving my hands, standing up for longer periods of time, which is something that I do with my work all the time as a, as a hairdresser. And it was getting harder and harder to do my job. Um, it got to a point where I was really losing the ability to function every day. So I ended up getting some blood work done um, in the summer of 2022, um, the doctor that I had at the time was a big believer in functional medicine as well as allopathic medicine. So she wanted me, uh, she encouraged me to go with functional medicine as a, as a first resort. So the blood work came back uh, with a preliminary diagnosis of um, scleroderma, and that was just devastating. So um, to think that I might not be able to work anymore. I was very familiar with scleroderma. And uh, for those who don't know, it is the um, tightening of connect connective tissue, excuse me, and uh, or the thickening of connective tissue and the tightening of the skin. So I was going to probably lose the ability to move my hands, uh, move my legs at some point, which was sounded to me like a career ending diagnosis. And I wallowed in self pity for a little while because it was a devastating diagnosis. I'm not somebody who gets sick. Um, so Fast forward, it took a long time to get in with a rheumatologist. I had to wait about five or six months, which gave me a really long time to kind of think about how I wanted to approach all of this. 
So I ended up um, deciding to go with functional medicine. And about three weeks into um, my treatment with him, I was a thousand times worse. And I could barely stand up. I was what, what was the what was the treatment? Um, right at that point, he just had me on um, an elimination diet. So we were heading towards, I believe, a liver cleanse. And I had never done functional medicine before, so it seemed kind of outlandish to me. You know, hold your arm up, throw all these tinctures on you, and see which one you responded with. And I was like, okay, is this really doing anything. So I wasn't like super excited about thinking he knew what he was doing, but I was trying to trust the process. But after three weeks and, and obviously insurance doesn't cover this. So this was going to cost me about $10,000. And after three weeks, I can barely move. I'm so much worse. And I'm literally just eating, you know, um, tons of vegetables, um, you know, olive oil, like he had me remove anything that was, um, you know, gluten, um, the typical stuff that you guys would typically say, you know, no sugar. So every week I had to remove something else from my diet and sort of head towards this. Um, but again, after three weeks, I, I couldn't move at all. They had me on all these tinctures and um, I was having trouble going to the bathroom, which is not something I've ever had in my entire life. And um, so a friend of mine had suggested carnivore. Um, and I thought, well, that's free. I can try that. <laughs> and she had just said that it helps a lot with inflammation. So um, I ended up trying it. And within 30 days, I could go back to work. So I wasn't perfect, but I was at a manageable point. Um, I wasn't losing weight with it, which was shocking to me because I know how these diets work. And it was generally something that I was hoping would happen at that point. I think I was about 209 pounds, which was outrageous to me. I just couldn't believe I got that heavy. Um, but it seemed like the harder I tried to lose weight, the more weight I gained. It was really strange. Um, so fast forward, I stayed on carnivore for about seven months. Um, and I just kind of hit a wall. I didn't really get any better. I, I, it brought the initial inflammation down, but it didn't get any better from that point on. Um, a friend of mine had suggested something on your page, so my sister and I um, started paying attention to your page and um, started watching the ask me questions and we were starting to learn a lot. And so I decided that I was going to send you um, a DM and kind of present my case and see if you guys could help. Because I believed at that point that the body can heal itself if you can just figure out what is going on. Like so many of the things that you said just really resonated with me. And I, and I was so mistrustful of modern medicine now. Like I just, you know, through that whole epidemic of COVID, I just lost the ability to trust regular doctors that if you don't want to get to the root cause and I don't, I don't want to talk to you about it. So uh, we started going back and forth and I started initially on the digestion protocol, which um, for me made me quite ill. <laughs> so I didn't really do that well with it. I tried to stick with it. Um, but it was pretty intrusive into my day, especially doing what I do. Can we, um, can we, can we hone in on this? What, what do you mean ill? And this is a very strange result, by the way. Usually the, the digestion protocol, we love starting people on the digestion protocol yeah. first. It's so gentle most of the time. It Gentle, you know, I often don't even use supplements at the beginning. I just use a couple of digestion products. Usually we get some great results. Inflammation went down. My joints feel better all kinds of stuff. Of course, digestion results. Like I'm used to great results with the digestion protocol. So that's kind of shocking to me to hear. So what happened? Yeah. So I got just every time I would take um, a dosage, I got massive diarrhea. And this was about five to six times a day because I was trying to break up the dosages and make them a little smaller and whatnot. And, and it just got to the point that I was like, okay, I, I can't get anything done. Like I'm trying to, to, to do all this. So I had reached out to you and you had suggested like, okay, well, let's get rid of, I think it was the, the microbiome or one of them that um, I know was your favorite. But for me, I think it, with the stevia or there was something in it that we were trying to figure out what it was that was upsetting my stomach so much. But I also, um, back in 2001, I did have gastric bypass. So I know for me, certain foods, certain things really upset my stomach anyway. So I wasn't super surprised by it, but it wasn't happening to my twin sister who also had gastric bypass. So we were trying to go back and forth and try to figure out like, well, what is it that I'm doing that you're not doing? And so we were getting a different result. Um, so, but I tried to then 
kind of self-diagnosis. Um, just, I'm, I'm such a stubborn pain in the butt, but, um, so I was like, well, maybe my thyroid is off. So I started taking oceans gold and then you eventually recommended oceans gold, but I was already three months ahead of you chucking down oceans gold. And, um, so I was trying basically to supplement my way through this and figure out what it was that I was deficient in, um, and kind of go from there. And I, I really felt like if I could figure out what the deficiency is, then I can fix this. I, I know I can. I just believe that God made the body perfect. And if we can get out of the way and let our bodies do what they're meant to do, then it will heal itself. So I really have held strong in that belief. And um, thankfully, I was right, because I, I knew if we stuck with it, we could figure it out. So we've definitely done some different things. <laughs> this is very interesting. And yeah, we can get caught up in the idea that everything is a deficiency. And sometimes even people accuse us of that. You know, people come in, they're, they're new. They just see the posts. They don't really see the whole message. And they say, so you're telling me every problem is a nutrient deficiency. And probably in every case, there's a deficiency involved, at least one. But that doesn't mean that simply correcting the deficiency is always going to correct the case. So just as you're describing, sometimes the body is simply rejecting products. It's not handling it. My own wife, it took her three years to be able to take any supplement, any supplement. She would feel some kind of reaction. She would feel weird. She would get breakouts. Our products, other products, I'm, uh, she was one of our toughest cases as well. And she didn't even actually ha really have a health problem. It's just her body would not accept the supplements until uh, I guess we refortified the guts over the long term. That was probably what actually did it. And she takes more products than me now, by the way. It just took a while to get used to it. And three years is a very, very long time. She wouldn't have stuck with it if I wasn't here beside her. So... And these are odd cases. Remember, this is this is one in a thousand. Something weird like this truly happens. Probably one in a hundred. We miss something. You know, I've really been honing in on iodine recently because out of all those people that messaged who didn't get their result, probably 95 percent of them got better just by adding iodine and just honed in on the thyroid. Not saying that iodine was the magic bullet by itself, but that combined with our normal 90 essential nutrients really did fix most people easy. Never had to get on another zoom with them at all there might also still be an underlying thyroid problem with you but let's continue with the story here so <laughs> i remember switching you up a few different times adding in blood sugar like you said adding in thyroid support which by the way is not high enough doses of iodine that i've been using i've been going like 20 times higher than that 30 times higher than that to uh, crack the result and then lower the dose after but you talked about this product that you had used. Before we name the product, I want to say, I don't like bashing other companies. We can sell our stuff just fine without bashing other companies. But this is one product I've heard a lot of bad stuff about. In fact, just a couple of days ago on our weekly Zoom meeting, one of our distributors said that she used it and it made her fillings fall out. Now, that might actually be a good thing, but it's a pretty dramatic thing. Usually we want to avoid drama. In, in this business. And there's been quite a few people who gave us negative reviews of it as well. And at the same time, my uh, sample is biased here because we only talk to people really who are sick and have some kind of a problem. But we've had many people come in who are already taking that product. And uh, it, it clearly did not fix the problem. So this product is based on zeolite, which is something I always dismissed in the past. But because of you, actually, I had to talk to a whole bunch of different people about it. And uh, I, I guess I believe in the concept at this point. The product was called TRS. No, like I said, normally I don't even want to name other companies. But in this case, I'm not recommending this product. I don't think well, it might not be just because of the zeolite itself. It might be something specific with this product. I do not know. There's good reviews out there on the Internet. I read a bunch this morning, but... Still, it seems to be questionable. And I do, I, I know a, a doctor who makes his own zeolite, who I trust him a lot more, I'm just saying. So the concept of the zeolite is that it binds to metals and it pulls metals into the zeolite. I think the main problem with this type of product, and, and we're going to, as we move forward in the story, we had something similar happen with vitamin C. I think the main problem is that it's not actually guaranteed to remove it. Just because it binds it doesn't mean it removes it. I was looking at some studies with animals using uh, zeolite powders, products, 
And uh, they were noticing, especially at the beginning, was an increase in the metals in the liver and the kidney. So that is an indication that something's happening, but that's not a guarantee that it's actually going to exit the body. And I think this is the primary problem. So you said something interesting about this product too. It's not just this product. You said you used way higher of a dose. What happened? Well, I, um, like I said, sometimes I'm my own worst enemy. So when I started taking TRS, um, I was basically like fear mongered into it. You know, those, the pages that are like, oh, you have heavy metals. If you've ever been vaccinated, if you've ever had this, if you've ever done that, you know, you need to get this out of your body. And then you start reading all of these um, amazing accolades with it. You know, my child was nonverbal. I, I couldn't get pregnant and everybody was having these amazing results with it. So I, I bought it um, thinking that while I was, you know, vaccinated as a kid and, and everybody was talking so much about EMFs and heavy metals and whatnot. So I started using it. And um, one of the things that I noticed, but I guess I didn't, they, they kind of tell you like, oh, that's your body getting rid of the toxin. So when I started taking it, I, I followed the dosage directions that was recommended, which I think was supposed to be like, don't quote me on this, but it was like two sprays for every like 50 pounds or I forget what it was. It's been a few years now. Um, so I started off with what I thought I was supposed to take. And it was like, I was getting a lot of, um, sorry, it's graphic, but my stool was hot and like, Oh, that's just, you know, that's the heavy metals coming out. So I'm thinking I'm doing a good thing. Um, so I had other supplements that I was taking at the time, you know, building my immune system and removing the heavy metals. And then I started noticing all the symptoms I was getting. So I thought, well, I must need more. Maybe I'm not taking enough because I felt like I was getting sicker, not realizing that this was actually probably what was making me symptomatic at that point. So I increased my dosage. And at that same point is when the vaccine came out and I was thought I was getting that spike protein. So I increased my dosage again because everyone was like, oh, you got to protect yourself. You have to protect yourself. So I was taking a lot of it. Um, I think at one point I hit probably 20 sprays a day. Um, 10 sprays in the morning and 10 sprays at night thinking I'm doing a good thing. And um, I mean, just talk about being stupid. Like I'm not recognizing that th this is causing the problem. I, cause I keep being told this is an amazing product and all you read on it is, you know, one accolade after another. And um, one of the friends that I have had messaged me, she was following a page and she said to me, do you follow this page? And I said, I don't think so. She's like, you're going to want to see this. And it was people coming forward saying all of their problems that they were having taking this. And I was reading my own story over and over and over again. And I just sat there and I started to cry because I thought I did this to myself. Like I, li I literally let them fear monger me into a point where I caused an autoimmune response in my own body because of this product, because I'm not that bright, obviously, and just kept taking more of it, thinking I'm helping myself protecting. And I, and I ended up, you know, creating this nightmare for myself, essentially. Um, so I obviously had had already stopped taking it, but they were bringing a class action suit against the company, they were trying to say that all of us were just making all of our stories up, and they were scrubbing our, um, our reviews offline, you know, they were paying Google to remove them. So when I had originally looked at TRS to use it, I had tried to research it and I couldn't find anything bad on it. Nobody said anything. I mean, I literally looked all over the internet and I couldn't find anything. And I'm just reading one amazing review after another of, you know, my nonverbal child is finally speaking again. And, you know, so, um, so in hindsight, I wish that I had obviously not used it. Um, and then, fast forward when it was one of the protocols that you had suggested again, using your doctor's um, zeolite, I literally had a panic attack when I read <laughs> that you wanted me to take it. I started to cry and I was like, maybe he just doesn't remember. I know you have a lot of cases. And I was like, I don't want him to think I'm being a jerk by not following the things that they want, but I'll just like, if there's a way that I can bring it up, like I couldn't even breathe reading the fact that you guys wanted me to take this again, after knowing what I just did to myself, with it, I just thought, okay, I'm going to have to say something. And hopefully, you know, if they still want me to do it, I'll do it. But I just felt so strongly, like maybe they forgot. <laughs> no, and, and PS, you know, I had some long conversations with him. This is, uh, 
I don't, I'm not sure if he wants to be named actually. He, he's uh, he's a little bit of a secret guy, mad scientist. And uh, yeah, I have it. I have it written down here. You know, she, she thinks that the TRS caused it, that the zeolite caused it. And I remember saying on the phone, I, I, did you, it's the same thing that you just said. Like, did you just hear me? <laughs> She's <Yeah>. saying <laughs> that this caused her probably saying, yeah, 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 yeah but mine's better. This is different. Da, 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 da. He still recommended it. I said, okay. Right. And I didn't know what to do at that point, right? I, I know the basics. I've only really gotten into studying, like hardcore studying what the nutrients do in the last few years. I know this will sound weird to a lot of people, but for the first several years, I, I didn't really need to know what all the vitamins did and what all the minerals did. Knew some basics, knew which ones were the antioxidants, understood the basic free radical concept and stuff like that. Obviously, you need calcium and this other list of nutrients for bones. That was my problem, bones and muscle. That's easy to remember. But I definitely didn't know the ins and outs. I didn't know the textbook versions because I actually didn't need to. Most people just got a great result, especially at the beginning. My, my girlfriend at the time, she had a post-concussion syndrome, bad, real bad. Boom, fixed, no problem. Me, lifelong stiff man syndrome, childhood arthritis, twitches, cramps, gone. Less than a week, gone. You know, our, uh, my mom, osteoporosis, gone. You know, my dad had bug eyes, thyroid, right? Gone. Simple. Didn't need to know. Didn't need to understand why. Didn't even know where the thyroid was. Didn't know what the spleen did, right? Didn't know where the adrenals were located. I, I didn't need to know any of these things. A lot of people think you need to know everything to start helping people. You, you absolutely don't. And maybe I got exceptionally lucky, but I think also some things have changed in the last 10 years. But I actually had to study communication for the first three, four, five years that I couldn't speak properly. I couldn't even like genuinely, I had to do speech therapy. I actually couldn't speak properly. And then when it comes to talking with people and getting them to take action, aka sales, I was bad at that. So I put all my focus into that. And it wasn't until I came on Instagram five years ago that people even really had any complicated questions. The average person just wants to know, okay, you think this will help me? Okay, I'm willing to give it a shot. How much does it cost? Do I have to keep doing this forever? Can I get away with half of a dose? Simple stuff, right? What about this food? Do I can I, can I keep this food? Can I, is there a way around this R real basic stuff? I never came across anything like you until <laughs> somewhat recently. And I probably did ignore some of the failures in the first few years on Instagrams. And I'm apologizing for that to anyone who's listening. If you have not gotten your result yet, reach out to me. I'm now a hundred percent committed to filling, to, to figuring this out. I've had to become a bit of a detective and a bit of a thyroid specialist, to be honest, because that's actually been most of the uh the secret cases that i couldn't figure out but yeah anyway anyway so i i have to lean on other people i've leaned on dr wallach since the beginning i've leaned on dr glidden pharmacist ben fuchs and now i've got a handful of other people who have been doing this a long time that i still call i have a couple questions here that i still have to call a couple people about some questions that i don't i don't know the answer to just saying i didn't get it either i didn't know why i, I said man are you I just told you that this product she thinks caused it. Yes, but you're going to use the same thing. Okay. Same thing, but different. Okay. So what happened at that point? So um, th that product arrived. I took it um, and it came with another one. It was like tox out or something. So I took it and it was around that same time. I think you had suggested the vitamin C flush. So I was doing both at the same time. Um, and initially the vitamin C flush um that I was shocked at how deficient I was when we did that. So that ended up coming back at, by the time I reached like my max load of it was at 42 grams before my body started finally getting rid of it. Um, but it, it didn't really ever go down. Like I could do that almost every day. And I was like, but it was alleviating some symptoms, but then I was like crampy and headache because vitamin C is a lot for your body to be taking that every day. You need know, to get bloated and whatnot. So initially the, it seemed like that was going to solve the problems. The pain was going away. The inflammation was going away. But after weeks of doing that, I still couldn't get below 24 grams a day. And it was like the, the pain started coming back. The inflammation was coming back. And I was like, okay, I don't seem to be holding on to anything. Like I don't really understand and I know I had said that to you and you're like, well, you are, but you're like, it's, it's not for whatever reason, like I'm absorbing it. Cause I kept thinking like, well, maybe I have an absorption problem with the gastric bypass surgery. Like maybe, maybe that's it. So nothing stays with me for very long is kind of what I was thinking. So 
Um, so we did that. And um, so I got a, a decent result quickly, but it was short lived. And then it was like, okay, now what? <laughs> What's next? So I did the zinc flush and I didn't really notice anything with that. Um, so I did that whole thing, but I, I didn't notice anything be different, alleviated, worse, nothing at all. And I, I think, um, after that, I think is when we did the, the liver flush. So this was actually the biggest clue. And I celebrated too early, certainly on this because yeah, I was giving out, uh, vitamin C mega flushes, or mega doses, this vitamin C flush, I call it to a lot of people. And I didn't make up the vitamin C flush. I, I was following old protocols in orthomolecular medicine straight from Linus Pauling. Basically, everyone agreed that you can't take more than eight grams at a time. And if if they if that doesn't cause diarrhea, this is bowel tolerance when you're talking about how much can you take? Well, you can take as much as your bowels can take. As soon as you start having diarrhea, that's your that's your tolerance. That's your bowel tolerance. So Eight grams was the recommended and you repeat that every hour or two until diarrhea occurs. And yeah, I remember sitting there waiting, waiting days for you to message me back. I'm like, it hasn't happened yet. I'm like, huh? For reference here, you said you couldn't get down below 24 grams. That's double the standard alternative cancer dose, right? So there's a lot of uh, alternative doctors out there who specialize in cancer and most of them, from my reading, recommend 10 to 12 grams a day. So this is double that. And it, it was not going, to, it's supposed to go down. If eight grams gives you diarrhea, you're supposed to lower it. And then in a few days at max, that that's now supposed to give you diarrhea too. Seven grams is supposed to. It means you're absorbing it, you're topping up. If I have two grams, I'll be running to the bathroom. Right. So you were doing this for weeks. And yeah, I was shocked, shocked at how much vitamin C you were taking. But yeah, you're right. To me, that didn't mean that you weren't absorbing it. It meant that you were absorbing it, but your body was using it all. I'm thinking, what for what? What is it using it for? And then you got worse again. And that was the clue. That was the clue that it was liberating something. It was just like the zeolite is supposed to. To me, this is what I interpreted. This is my theory that it was binding to whatever was in there, whether it was mercury or lead or cadmium or, or something. It was doing something, but it wasn't getting rid of all of it. So that's when we decided to go in with the, the liver flushes. I just wanted to make another comment here. You mentioned detox symptoms. And if somebody is feeling worse on our protocol or some, some other protocol or a diet, I, I hate using that as an excuse. I think that's very commonly used as an excuse. Hey, I'm feeling worse on this diet. It is common that when you get off of processed foods, you can have a little bit of a withdrawal period, two, three, four weeks, maybe six weeks if you were an alcoholic or a candyaholic or something like that. You could feel kind of awful for a few weeks. Vitamin C should be one of those things that makes that easier, by the way, kind of calm down the nervous system. But I'll, I think a lot of people just just toss that out there as an excuse. Oh, I'm feeling worse on this product. Oh, it must be detox symptoms. We really don't like that. It, it's probably possible. You know, especially you got metals leaving the body or something, it's probably possible, but it's not the first suspect. The first suspect is they're reacting to some ingredient or the, the body's not absorbing it. The body's not utilizing it. Maybe we got to step back and work on digestion or take it slower. I like you know, dropping the doses down, ease back into it, usually alleviates any discomfort or whatever. But I think a lot of people are way too quick to say, oh, that just must be detox symptoms and just forget about it. Like I said earlier, we got to study the failures and what's going wrong here. Let's hone in on this. So, yeah, it was not a good sign to me that you were feeling bad. Some people might think that's actually a good sign. Some people who kind of specialize in detox might say, oh, that means it's working. To me, that means we need more support for the body. We shouldn't be feeling worse, not dramatically worse, and not the type of stuff that you're describing going back to your symptoms, right? Can we clarify here? You didn't have scleroderma before you started trying to do this detox stuff in the pandemic, right? No, no, I, the diagnosis came, my symptoms started in 2021. And then I, I had the blood work done in 2022. So prior to that, I had no symptoms. I was as healthy as everybody else, I guess, eating all the garbage food I was eating, but I didn't know that at the time. So, but you know, I, I was never sick, you know, I just kind of lived my life. I worked out, I 
I did all the things that I always wanted to do. I was, I, you know, spent most of my life being quite athletic. So to have a hard time just going for a walk and my legs would swell up so bad. I couldn't walk for a few days afterwards. Like my husband would get so exasperated. Like you just need to, you need to move more. And I'm like, are you mental? Like I can barely move. I'm trying everything. I'm not a lazy person. And and I basically turned into a couch potato because I was constantly elevating my feet and my back was going out like crazy, um, which I, I do think had something to do with um, like a calcium deficiency. I mean, when I kind of look back, you know, having gastric bypass surgery in, in 2001, I lived my whole life on processed foods because I didn't know I grew up with them. That that to me was food. So when the pandemic hit, I was actually on Atkins. Um I was getting ready. I wanted to have um, like a tummy tuck and a breast lift and all the things I had waited 20 something years for. Um, and I was living on Atkins food, not realizing that all that was just a chemical yuck. And so it was um, to learn all this now about food has been really eye opening because now I, I literally won't put anything in my body if it if it's not organic, homemade or whatever. Like I won't touch an Oreo. I'll never have to read like all that stuff. And I thought that stuff was so good. <laughs> I never thought I would see the day that not only would I not eat it, I won't allow it in my house. Like don't, don't even bring it in my house. I don't want to look at it. That stuff's poison. So I think for me 20 or basically, I mean, this all started, I'm, I'm 51. So this started just uh, what, three years ago. And, um, so at that point I spent basically, you know, 48 years, eating garbage and probably massively nutrient deficient because of the gastric bypass surgery, they bypass the large intestine, which is obviously where we pull out a lot of our nutrients from our food. So I'm not even getting nutrients in the food I'm eating. So I think a lot of this was probably built up. And then the TRS either probably pushed me over the edge. Maybe it didn't have anything to do with it. And the timing was just suspect, but I feel strongly that that was a major reason, um, why all the things happened and, and maybe it just made it happen faster than it would have. Maybe this would have happened regardless. I don't know. I did. I thought I was taking very good care of myself because I was not somebody who's sick and, and I was thin and I, you know, I was doing all the right things, but I had no idea that the food I was eating was so terrible and it, there was nothing in it that was food. You're pretty lucky that you would go 48 years on the American diet and not actually yeah. have a problem show up. Yeah. I've got something else interesting here in my notes. My notes are a little bit of a mess, but uh, I've been trying to keep notes on cases now. You said you did a fast here, but you lost no weight on it. How, how long was that fast and when was it? Uh, that was last year in, uh, I had started wanting to fast again in January of uh, 2023. So I, I had been trying for a couple of months um, I think it was just prior to reaching out to you, actually. So I had been doing building up to them. So I was doing like uh, I started with a 24 and then went to 36 and then went to 48 hours and then 72 hours. And so I I think the furthest I'd gotten was about five days um, and I I lost nothing. And I was like, how is this possible? <laughs> like, I'm literally not eating food and I'm still not like this doesn't make any sense to me. So my body was just so messed up that. I think it was just literally in, in self-preservation mode to the point where it wasn't letting go of anything, even all the poison that was inside of it, just holding on onto it. So, so it's, that was kind of my thought anyway. I mean, I don't know. It's worth pointing out. A lot of people still have this misconception, this ancient misconception that calories in equals calories out. We've seen morbidly obese people on starvation diets, not lose a pound or gain weight. I don't know how it works. <laughs> I'm not that deep into it yet, but I know the body needs a lot of different nutrients to work, to process everything. It's it's metabolism, it's digestion, everything. And yeah, I suspect your body was pretty massively depleted in general, enough where it's not even pulling fats out for reuse and stuff like that. Yeah, very, very strange. You must have been tired, to be honest. Oh, okay. exhausted. And then trying to do, you know, I, I started a homestead. So I'm trying, I'm here I'm in agony, pain. And now I have to go take care of all these animals. And I was just like, what did I do to myself? I just, you know, I just want to feel good. And I think my lymphatic drainage system was just so bad. So I feel like that's improved a lot. Um, I did start using a rebounder at your um, suggestion. 
Um, but I think when I was fasting before my lymphatic drainage was just not moving at all. So I think it was just holding on to every little thing. So I did fast forward. I did want to try fasting again. Um, so I did the liver flush that you had suggested first. And when I saw what came out, I was just shocked because I just didn't think about like what was could be inside of me. I, I was never like a drinker or, you know, anything like that. I mean, just social. Um, but I didn't really know like what to expect with that. So when you had told me like get a colander and I was like, Oh, we're really going for it now. So, <laughs> um, but when I first had my first bowel movement with it and I saw what I thought was broccoli stumps and I thought, well, I haven't had broccoli because I was doing carnivore. I'm like, I haven't had broccoli. And like, where, where the heck has that been hiding? You know? And so I had sent an article to my sister and I guess it had pictures in it. And I just didn't get that far in the article. So she was like, no, those are golf stones. And I was like, Oh, there was a lot of them. I was like, I must've passed at least 40 or 50. And then I saw a few liver flukes that, you know, now I'm like looking stuff up to see what the heck am I looking at? And, um, so I noticed, um, Within a week of doing that, and you had suggested then going into the coffee enemas. And honestly, the liver flush for me, I think was the really big key turning point. And then the enemas have been just a game changer for me. So I really wanted to get back into fasting and that took away the last bit of inflammation that I was holding on to. Um, so I did an eight day fast. And then uh, about a month or so later, I did a 14 day fast and I have no more symptoms. I've done the liver flush, uh, one more time. I wanted to do it one more time just to make sure, um, anything that could have come out came out. Cause I had been reading, like sometimes a lot is brought forward and didn't all make it out. So I did it again. And, uh, I really only passed, um, probably maybe another 20 small, gallstones, nothing, um, nothing major, but during the fast was really interesting. So I had to message you on that one. And this is a little embarrassing, but I was also doing parasite cleanses. And during my fast on day nine, I got really emotional. And I thought, why is this so hard today? I've already gone nine days. Like it doesn't get any harder. This is just it, you know? And I was really flying high. My energy was high. So it was weird to me that on day nine, I was, I was emotionally struggling. So day 10, I went and did my enema and I felt something come out and I thought, what the heck? I haven't eaten in 10 days. It can't be anything solid left in my body. And I passed a huge pile of worms twice. And that just, I so excited and grossed out at the same time. Cause I was like, get out of my body. But like, holy cow, I can't believe that was inside my body. And I mean, I was just shocked. So I, you know, after reading all about that, but I didn't look when I was doing the parasite cleanse to see if I was passing anything. I was just trusting like something's coming out. I don't need to see it, you know? So that was a uh, very shocking to see all of that come out all in one fell swoop like that. It was massive. So there was a lot going on. <laughs> it is very interesting. This is why I say this is one of the weirdest cases I've ever seen. So let's, yeah. let's back up and explain a couple of things here. So on your original fast before you were with us or whatever, I believe the reason that you were not getting more energy, because that's what usually happens, right? A fast is difficult for the first day or two. And then people usually report, hey, actually, I feel great. Mm -hmm. Some people are like, I, I feel like elated, like I'm floating. And I've done a nine day fast before too, and several four or five day fasts. And it's true after day, especially on day three or four or something like that. It, it's weird how light and good you feel. And that's because your body is now pulling fat and, and burning that. And as we all know from the ketogenic theory that that's supposed to be much more efficient than carbs, right? So uh, that's what's supposed to happen. But to me, the fact that that was not happening for you, you were not getting energy from the fat, that tells me your liver was not working properly. And to me, as I've dug, dug deeper and deeper into this, I believe that any of these weird cases, it's either going to be the liver or the thyroid or both. If the liver's not functioning, you're not functioning properly. Same with the thyroid. And in this case, it might have been a, a little bit of both. But yeah, if you're, if you're feeling worse and worse and worse and worse on a fast, stop doing the fast because that's not the key here. And the same with the vitamin C. The fact that it was liberating something, you felt a little bit better, but then you felt worse telling me that the liver was not dealing with it. 
the liver was something was sluggish in the liver. It's clogged up, whatever. So you said you use the word colander. I'm, I'm using the word strainer. We got a lot of listeners from all over the world. OK, so this is how I was taught to do the liver flush. This is our standard 30 day liver flush. We, we sell it. I'll put it in the description. I don't recommend doing it unless you've been topped up on nutrients for at least three months first, because it's a very tough process on the body. And that's actually why I recommended coffee enemas after that, because I didn't want to do a, with that type of a liver flush every week or something like that. It's way too hard on the body. But the fact that you felt great on it said, okay, we okay, bingo. That was finally, we got the bingo. We figured it out. We needed to flush the liver. We couldn't have started with that. A lot of times the body will just reject it. It won't even do it. The person might throw up um, or the, it just, nothing happens. They don't actually get the flush. But yeah, we use the strainer. I was taught this, uh, especially by our, our Mexican teams. We've got a lot of Mexican teams. Good thing I speak just barely enough Spanish to understand what they were trying to tell me. And they said, no, you got to use a strainer. You got to use a strainer because if you don't, you can't see what comes out. And what comes out is always interesting and it's always shocking. It's a very visceral thing. And it, picture this, right? You're flushing. I know it's gross for the listeners, but whatever. This You, you got to talk about bowel movements in this business. You got to talk about menstruation. It's just deal with it. If you do a liver flush, the toilet will be cloudy. You will not be able to tell what comes out. So if you use a strainer and you wash it off after in the bathtub, you can see stones, flukes, as you were saying, which are liver parasites. They look kind of like little Christmas lights, right? Little red, green Christmas lights. You could see worms in there on the first flush. I've seen it before. I've seen tapeworm come out, which is also weird that it took you so long to see worms come out. And so we'll talk more about how many of these uh, enemas that you had to do. But you got to see it is the point. When I was taught this, I did it and I was perfectly healthy. I had fixed my problems long ago, years before, five years before. I had already fixed my problems, was feeling great. I hardly eat any food. I'm skinny, you know, just anyway. So I did it, did it with the strainer. Couldn't believe how much stuff came out of me. I didn't, uh, flukes, same thing. Flukes, stones. I'm pretty sure everybody has flukes and stones in them. Maybe we could prevent that with proper nutrition. But if you come here to the alternative table when you're 20, 30, you know, I was 24 when I first started. You've already got this stuff in you and nutrients alone are not going to get them out. It's not like a kidney stone. Your body's going to try and push the kidney stone out regardless, whether you like it or not. It seems like the, the liver will just hold on to more, 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 more stuff. And uh, you were twice as old as me when you came in here. Well, there's going to be twice as much stuff, at least, I think. I've never seen a strainer picture because this is also what the Mexican said. Get them to use a strainer. Get them to take a picture of it. Get them to show their friends. And you, you would think it's weird, but a lot of people are eager to show their friends. You know, hit, look, at what, look what came out of me. Can you believe this? Oh, my gosh. It's probably in you, too. Right. And I felt amazing after the liver flush. I, I had reached the next level of, of health and vigor. Wow. I thought I was I thought I reached 100 percent. Nope. It, this is the next level. Made my roommates do it. You know, all our friends were, were doing it. Made my girlfriend do it. Something came out of everyone. Nobody had a clean strainer. Nobody. So. Keep that in mind. If you've been on this program a while, and you want to reach the next level. I think the liver flush is a is an excellent thing to do. The guy who invented that specific program, Dr. Luis Ariaza, he recommends doing it every six months. I don't know if I'd go that far. I'm thinking one a year is good, but I might as well listen to him once every six months, once a year or something like that. I'm about to go do one when I get back to my house. So I've got a kit waiting there for me. It's been a few years. I probably still have more stuff in me. It's just a kind of a fact of life that we're going to pick up parasites. You can't avoid them. They're everywhere. There's fungal spores like 10,000 feet in the air. You can't avoid mold. You know, if you have a mold infestation, you got to deal with it. But you, in general, cannot avoid these things. You can't avoid parasite eggs. doesn't matter if you're a vegetarian or, or a meat eater. It doesn't matter if you cook all your food. You're going to encounter parasites. And you can flush them out. And this is one powerful way to do it. So... Just saying, yeah, people think the strainer is weird. Well, you want to see what comes out. It's the most interesting thing you'll probably ever see. And you'll be shocked. You know, I remember staring at it. Whoa, whoa, can't believe it. And you, during the flush, you know, you're running back and forth to the bathroom. Most people. And for me, I, had, by the way, I had to wait two days for it to happen. I'd sit, Usually you take the stuff on the night. You go to sleep on your right side, curled up. So you put pressure on your liver and you should, should be waking up at like three in the morning, seven in the morning, run into the bathroom. For me, I had to sit there waiting a whole day still fasting because you're not supposed to eat until it happens just sitting there drinking water hoping it's going to happen 
And yeah, the next day is just like everybody else I had gone through this with already back and forth. You're in the bathroom, you're drinking water, you're back in the bathroom, you're drinking water. And it's just again and again and again, purging out these stones and all, all this. It just looks like junk. It looks like trash coming out of you. And yeah, what the heck is it? What are you talking about? How does this even fit in the liver? You know, and they say gallstones. How big is my gallbladder? What the heck? We're talking handfuls of stuff here. We've seen pounds come out of people, especially some, some larger people. We're talking about multiple strainers here, full of stuff. Shocking. Absolutely shocking. Anyways, this is something we don't talk about very often. I've never done a podcast about this. People should know about liver flushes. It's very interesting. It's not something that you do every day, but you should probably do it if you've been doing this already. And so, yeah, the coffee enemas came next, came next. And by the way, I might have even recommended something different knowing what I know now, because after these past six or eight months, I've had to dig deep and I'll mention something that I might have done differently later. But yeah, the, the vitamin C was a big clue to this. So we got into the liver. We hit the bingo with the liver. You finally told me you felt great on the liver flush. And you were the very first person I've ever recommended a coffee enema to. I dismissed coffee enemas for years and years and years. Many listeners probably heard me say three years ago, ah, I don't bother with any form of enema because I said, oh, it just cre that just cleanses the, the rectum. That doesn't really matter. You, you can do that, I guess, if you want. But I would always say, this is an exact quote from past Ryan here. I would say you want to do colon hydrotherapy so that you get past the rectum to clean out the colon. I didn't understand that the coffee, specifically the coffee, actually causes the liver to release a whole bunch of bile and, and basically flush the liver. It's a different form of a liver flush. And I thought that would be easier on the body, especially because a lot of these uh, alternative cancer people will do multiple uh, coffee enemas a day with their patients, like five a day or, or even more. So if it's safe enough to do five a day, I thought, okay, well, we, we got the starting of a result here. Let's not celebrate too early again, like we did with the vitamin C. Let's do some coffee enemas. So, okay, so how often were you doing them? Because I didn't give you instructions. I said, basically, just look it up and get some opinions online, because I'm just going to repeat those opinions anyways. I always try to be honest. I'm like, this is my, this is the first time I've ever done this. You know, I thought, Pretty sure I told you that too. So get some other opinions. So what did, what yeah. did you do? Well, you had said, um, you had told me that cancer patients can do them up to five times a day. And you, so I already had had a kit. Um, I had bought it during the pandemic. I started following pages that were talking about them, but I had only used it a handful of times. And then I was reading a lot of controversy. You should, you shouldn't. And I just was like, whatever. So I just kind of stopped doing it. So I had it already. So uh, I was familiar with it a little bit. Um, but I also started doing more research on it when you had suggested it. And you had said, I want you to do the once a day. Um, and it's like, let's, let's start with that and see how you feel. So I started doing them daily. And I just noticed each week that my symptoms were just disappearing, you know, little by little. And I remember my husband and I had been married 13 years and we had never gone on vacation until 2022. That was the first time. And I remember standing there on vacation. I couldn't close my hand all the way. Like I just couldn't do it. No matter how hard I tried, it would stop like this. And I have no pain. I can make a tight fist. I can open, but I, I was finding like for those couple of years, like, my hands would kind of stay like this a lot. And it always felt like they were being forced shut. And it was such an effort to try to open them. And, you know, I remember um, one time I had gluten by accident. And at that point, I wasn't trying to be gluten free. I was just following the carnivore. And then I was animal based, but I had eaten gluten um, without thinking about it. I was just more mad that it wasn't organic. I wasn't thinking about gluten at all. And I couldn't move my hands for two weeks. So it turns out, um, staying away from gluten all that time, not trying to, but I actually have quite a bit of inflammation from gluten. So going through the coffee enemas now, and I have full mobility of my hands again. I mean, this is my livelihood. This is what I do. So, I mean, I'm, I'm milking my goats now. I have, you know, my hair career, I can move my hands. I can do all the things that I haven't been able to do in a couple of years. And I think, each time I do the coffee enema, I just feel, you know, more and more comes out. So during that fast, when I had passed all those, <laughs> all those worms, I mean, I just couldn't believe it, but 
I felt literally like this disease had just like left my body and I couldn't believe the difference in what I felt like over the next 48 hours. I mean, it was just like night and day. It was crazy. <laughs> like that was just wild. I just didn't expect it because I had already done like 30 days of ivermectin. I had done um, another parasite cleanse called cell core that one of my clients had gotten me from uh, a friend of hers. That's a chiropractor and they sold it. So I had done a couple rounds of that and um, some bendazole and, and I really wasn't seeing anything cause I wasn't looking. So to see all of that come out <laughs> during an enema um, during the fast, it was just shocking, but I do feel like a completely different person. So I'm still struggling a little bit with sleep. That's still an issue. And, um, and then a little bit, uh, not a little bit, but still with, um, with bleeding, but, um, hopefully that will start working itself and balancing itself out. So, but we'll see, but everything else, all, all the other stuff has just, it's just disappeared. And by the way, worms float the audience, if, if they didn't know. So when we're talking about using the strainer, you actually can see worms float, but the rest of it, you can't, it all sinks the flukes and, and all the crud that comes out of the liver, all, all of that sinks. So you want to see it, but I do have a question here that I, I think I added to my questionnaire later. Did you have fillings to begin with metal fillings, teeth fillings? Um, I don't know if they're metal. Um, I had two fillings, both like the size of a pencil tip, but I honestly don't know if they're resin or if they're metal. Like my first cavity was when I was 27. So um, I barely remember, you know, it's been over 25 years now. So I, I honestly don't remember, but I don't feel like they were using metal fillings back then. And I so, think we okay. did talk about this. Forgive me to talk to a lot of people. Yeah. But yeah. If, if somebody has got, like I ask now, I want to know, you know, did you suddenly get, bad uh, did you suddenly get symptoms after you got a filling or a root canal well that's probably important but yeah if it happened 20 plus years ago and then just later just all of a sudden you got symptoms that doesn't sound like it was caused by the filling it does sound like it was caused by the uh the product and there probably was toxins in you to begin with to be honest because you are a hairdresser there's yeah. lots of chemicals involved in that it absorbs through your skin you breathe it your hair dies and the sprays and all kinds of stuff. I'm sure you already know that you dug deep into it. So I'm, it's probably the original source as well as processed foods in, in general. They do add straight metals to a lot of junk foods and it's got nowhere to go in the body if the body can't do this whole process properly. So you did have some other things here to begin with. You had palpitations. This is when we first talked on the Zoom. You had palpitations, edema, which is swelling insomnia which you say you're still struggling with but it's improved yeah it's improving yeah yeah okay. i still struggle a little bit but it's not as bad head pressure endometriosis any of these things changed um the endometriosis i still feel like when so right now when i get my cycle so i think the average person is supposed to get their cycle every 28 days and i just bleed about 21 days. So I get it really, really heavy when I'm supposed to for about a day and a half to three days. Um, and that's when the pain from the endometriosis really kicks in is either right as it's coming and then right at the end of it. So for that, like right, right as it, it starts to get heavy. And then after the fact, um, I get really, really horrible back pain with that. Um, so I haven't noticed any improvement with that yet. So We'll and see. you're you're still on the baseline 90 essential nutrients, correct? Yep. I think we need to add iodine. So I've been doing that topically. So, and I know we were going to talk about that at some point. Um, so I've just been putting that Lugol's on my arm, but um, I just do that like three times a week. So I don't even know how much I'm putting in. So I know I've been watching your stories and talking about it. So I figured we would get to that at some point. You're always ahead. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's good. You know, um, you should you should be trying to figure this out yourself too you know we're we're not perfect people on on our side we try but uh you got to be engaged with this yourself and you've been very very engaged how long does it stay on your arm before disappearing um i would say sometimes i forget to look uh the very first time i did it i would say about 5 or 6 hours um it's it was probably faded by half at that point about 5 or 6 hours maybe 
Um, so, I, haven't, I haven't looked lately. I think it's been a little bit less now, probably like three or four. Uh, but so it's supposed I, to actually stay longer. It's supposed to actually stay longer. If it if it stays all the way to five hours, that means you're not deficient. Supposedly, I'm just following other people. I don't I don't actually use the skin method myself. I just do it orally, and yeah. I've gotten a lot of people on the iodine. And we have a lot of people who come to us with iodine already. They're already taking iodine, or they're already taking desiccated thyroid, and it hasn't worked, or it worked kind of, or it flipped them into hyperthyroid. So definitely, it needs to be combined with the 90 essential nutrients. I think you're doing everything else right. You know, you're eating organs and you're eating, you probably eat better than I do. I think you eat better than I do, to be honest, with, with your homestead. I think that might be our final piece of the puzzle, getting that thyroid correct. I do recommend continuing to do it on the skin if that's how you've been doing it. You could switch to oral. Doesn't really matter. Have you had blood work done recently? I don't mean to make this too public, by the way, but this, oh, we should okay. all learn from this, I think. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm fine with it. Um, I have not had blood work. We don't have health insurance at the moment. So uh, at some point when we get health insurance again, I probably will go get some blood work. But I haven't had any blood work since 2022. You probably can just get a simple thyroid panel for a hundred bucks or less at just a regular lab. I don't have health insurance either, by the way. I do recommend getting a thyroid panel because I don't see any other possible issue. I think you will continue to improve just as you go because obviously your body's been through a ton, a ton here. Yeah. It's a shocking mountain you've climbed and now you're getting down the other side of it. So I think you will just continue to improve if you just keep doing what you're doing. But you also do live in the Northeast, which is highly deficient in iodine. Unless you're a fisherman living, living off of lobster and clams, then I'm thinking this is one of the biggest, most understated, underrated deficiencies out there is iodine. A lot of people are going to disagree. A lot of people are going to strongly agree. But if we we have a co very complete program. It's almost perfect. But that almost word is is very important. I think iodine has been the missing piece to our puzzle. My wife and I have even started on it because our thyroids were not perfect. I, I noticed a lot of people who have been on the program a long time. I think a lot of the other nutrients are making up for it a little bit. You know, their skin's better and all that stuff. But they still have some weird lingering symptoms that I truly can't explain other than saying this must be the thyroid now at yeah. this point. You know, the B vitamins will overcome a lot of stuff, right? They'll, they'll work hard for you to function as, as well as you can. But there are still some people out there with lingering fatigue, lingering insomnia a little bit, you know, crazy dreams, just kind of weird, weird stuff. I guess that's an interesting question. Do you have crazy dreams when you do sleep? Uh, I've always been a, vi a very vivid dreamer. Yeah, that's just... My husband never remembers his dreams. I remember every one of mine. And they're always, seeing this come up again and again. Yeah, they're always vivid. That's coming up on the on our conversations again and again. By the way, people might ask, why did I recommend a zinc flush at one point? Well, I originally recommended the vitamin C flush because I didn't know what else to do. You'd already been on the 90 for a while. You're, you're eating clean. And I don't really care if you're carnivore or vegan, as long as you're off the bad foods. And you know, I didn't really see any major holes. I think I did say you could eat some more vegetables. Don't be scared of vegetables. But is that going to really change the situation? Not really. So with a, a bunch of people, I didn't know what to do. Give them a vitamin C flush. See what happens. And it was interesting. You were not the only person who could handle just massive doses of vitamin C. Massive. And I'm sitting there scratching my head. I'm making phone calls. I'm reading through books. What is this? Why, why would anybody be able to take 50 plus grams? There was a couple of people who took more than you. Some people wow. were taking up to 200 grams before anything happened. And I'm, I'm just bashing my head against the wall. What the heck is going on here? Is this something just because of the modern times or what? So anyways, uh, zinc flush is another one of those things where if I see an obvious sign of a zinc deficiency, like white spots on the nails or their immune system's bad or they got fungus or something, I'll just recommend the zinc flush. The zinc flush can kill worms too, by the way. I think it was one of your friends actually told me because I recommended to her the zinc flush and told me worms came out. I think it was one of your friends. We don't need to name her name, uh, but it, it can happen. Zinc is very powerful and it, it can kill all kinds of parasites. And, you know, I've uh, changed my candida protocol a few times over the years. And I'm realizing that the zinc can kind of kill it on its own. You still need to change the environment so it doesn't come back. But zinc has been very, very powerful. And I use high doses of zinc for a short period of time. That's what the zinc flush is. Not going to give the numbers here because too many people uh, try and do it on their own and they shouldn't. You should get guidance for these types of things. I wanted to comment on this $10,000 number. 
that you were originally quoted because all of this over the over a year i i guarantee this did not cost anywhere near ten thousand dollars did it oh gosh i hope not i mean i know i was getting supplements like crazy so i think and they weren't all recommendations from you some of these i just kind of was like oh glucogel let me try that and that says it's supposed to help with this and then i would reach out to you like well how much should i be taking and and because you know i, I was heavier um I had to basically do double the dosage being the, as heavy as I, as I got. So I would venture to say over the course of the year, in all honesty, I probably spent four, a bunch of about 4,000 in supplements. Well, that's still pretty good. And you get our guidance for free Yeah. and honing in on that glucogel. A lot of people won't know what that is. It's a connective tissue supplement. So yeah, originally looking at your case, I'm like, okay, scleroderma. Okay, connective tissue problem. All right, 90. We'll add some connective tissue maybe, and that should have fixed it. But clearly, it wasn't just a deficiency. This was actually a toxicity problem. And this is the first I've ever seen, truly, where, where it was confirmed that toxicity actually was the problem. A lot of people put that top on their list. I read a lot of alternative books and stuff, and a lot of people, that's the top thing they're talking about. All the toxins in our food and in air and the water and the... Yeah, hair products and stuff like that. That's the number one problem. I always put it far down on the list and it still is pretty far down on the list. But you've taught me that it is absolutely possible where toxicity could be the problem. And we found a, a way to actually deal with that. And we actually found a clue, the vitamin C flush, because that was a clue now for, for other people I have following a similar program from you who are now reporting results. Some people annoy me because they take too long to, to do the thing. Hey, have you started yet? This is three weeks ago I mentioned it, you know. Oh, I'm, I'm going to start soon. That's annoying. You do it even before I mention it, you know, or do it right away. So at least even... I like, just want to feel better. I really didn't care. I was like, I'll do whatever you tell me to. I That's the way I felt about it. I went from being so active to living like somebody who's in a nursing home in mm -hmm. a very short period of time. And it, it was hard emotionally. It was hard on my marriage. Watching maybe my husband was like, well... All he could see is that I just got heavy and I was lazy. He couldn't understand the pain that I was in. So yeah, I didn't care what you told me to do. I was, I was like, how fast can I get it? So I could get started, you know, like if I already had it, I was already on it. <laughs> so, and that I was, was good. We, we tell people, keep us updated. It's not for no reason. It's not just being polite. Keep us updated. So if, if it's not working, I want to know if it's working, I want to know. And some people, yeah, I hear from them two, three months later and I forgot who they are. Did you do it yet? Oh, no, I did some of it. And uh, yeah, take it into your own hands. And you're very good at that. And thank you for that. You make my job easier, even though this was a tough thing. At least you kept doing things and kept reporting back so that we could adjust and we needed to adjust. And we still need to adjust. We still need you to keep me updated. So knowing what I know now, I knew about this before chelation. I knew about chelation before, but I've never actually recommended it. I think I would have gone for chelation earlier at this point. And chelation is IV, so you need a clinic to do that. There is a clinic I do trust to do it. They're in Tijuana, Mexico. It's the American Biodental Clinic. You can see them in the description, AmericanBioDental.com. If you tell them not us sent you, you get $50 off if you spend at least $400. I'm going down there in a couple of weeks with a loved one to get uh, their teeth fillings removed because I trust them to do the work. And there, there's other clinics that can do it. There's clinics here in America that can do it. It's just a lot more expensive. And I don't know, I actually just don't have a relationship with any of those clinics. But this, I do actually know a man who had very severe lead poisoning and the chelation saved his life, EDTA chelation. It's a very kind of famous chelator, EDTA. And vitamin C is also a chelator, right? Selenium is also a chelator. Sulfur, a few other nutrients too. So I do think that that was the reason that we got some kind of a result, some kind of a response with the vitamin C and the fact that you could take so much that was a clue that it was chelating. It was indeed chelating it. Was it fully removing it? No, we needed the liver flush for that. But IV chelation is probably something that now I will recommend much sooner. If it is a weird case like this, if we do suspect metal buildup, metal toxicity, I think it is a good option. And I would still do liver flushes after that. But I think we might have been able to shave some months off of this process here if we did chelation to start with. And I do actually have a case now 
in another country where they are able to get the chelation there overseas. And I think that's going to be a big, big part. And even some other people in, in that country, they agree. Yeah, that's a good option. So if we see signs of, of metal toxicity, and these could even be nutrient toxicity, like selenium is an essential nutrient, but you could have raging high selenium in the blood. You need to chelate that. It might be mega doses of vitamin C that get rid of it. That's the cheaper thing to try. Vitamin C raw doesn't cost very much. It's pretty cheap to do a, a mega dose. Not if you'd have to take 50 grams a day, but it's still still cheaper than going to a clinic and we can get some clues there and hopefully it can chelate some of it. But yeah, there are some metals that can build up. Copper, zinc will bring down the copper and the selenium. It should, providing the rest of the things are working properly and all the cofactors are there. Just saying chelation is an option that I'm now going to go to faster. And I will recommend the American Bio Dental Clinic for that. But you can also just f try and find one yourself. There's even other chelations now. EDTA is pretty old school, still being used. But there are some new formulas that I, I don't know the details of. So look into that if you do. Actually, talk to us if you do. Don't just look randomly. If you have if you suspect that you have any anything close to this type of a case, just just contact us. You can contact me directly. That's all in the in the description. You can find all that information. So the main last thing here that we're dealing with is sort of the menstruation issues, which I think we're going to just continue on with what you're doing. Add some more iodine. I would recommend getting blood work, at least a thyroid panel. It probably would be smart to get a hair analysis, which shouldn't cost more than one or maybe two hundred dollars. That would also give us a good idea if there is anything left. You're still doing the coffee enemas? Yes. Daily, weekly? Uh, no, I bumped to every other day. So I, my work schedule right now is is like three days a week. So it's a lot easier if I can just do them on my day off. So it's about every other day. Okay. Yeah. And do you find it uncomfortable or anything? I, maybe you don't want to go into the details, but honestly, I've never done one. I've done hydrotherapy before, but I know a lot of people might be squeamish about doing an enema. What, what's it like? Um, I don't think, I think you kind of have to get the hang of it. <laughs> like if you go too fast with it and fill yourself too quickly, the cramping is just insane. So trying to find that sweet spot of not too slow and not too fast is a little tricky. Um, but I've also find like if you can, um, pre evacuate using like an ACV, uh, so an apple cider vinegar, um, enema first, so the coffee can stay in you longer and you don't feel that need to expel it so quickly. So a lot of times um, I'll do that first and just sort of flush out um, my bowels and then go in and do the coffee enema so I can hold it longer. So just from the, the some of the pages and the research that I've been doing, you want to try to be able to hold it um, at least 10 to 15 minutes. And that allows your blood to cycle through the entire body four to five times, which will then pull out all the toxins from your liver. Not all of them, but it pulls out toxins from your liver and, um, and can help remove, um, worms, you know, parasites. Um, but just, you know, all the, the heavy metals, like it can do all of that if you leave it in long enough. So you don't want to just flush it in and flush it out. It's, you know, you're not trying to just go to the bathroom. It's, it's supposed to serve a purpose. So trying to find that, that happy medium where I usually like to read comments because I feel like people give some really good tips on different things that you can do. So one of the the tips was like, do the apple cider vinegar flush first. And that way you can actually take the coffee in and hold it in longer. So you don't have to be cramping or, you know, any of that stuff, but I don't find it to be awful. Some the beginning it was um, when I very first started doing them before you had told me to, because I just didn't realize like when you go too fast like that, I mean, it's the worst cramping you've ever felt. <laughs> you just like, Oh God, I got to get this out immediately. So it, you just want to find like that slow rhythm where you can about 10 to 15 minutes to empty your bucket or your bag into you and then hold on to it for about 10 to 15 minutes. If you can, that's sort of the, yeah, it's not awful, but I would rather do other things, but it's working. So I'll keep doing it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the uh, the only two concerns that I've heard and read about the coffee enemas, number one, can deplete the gut flora. So you want to reconstitute the gut flora as much as possible. I know you've had a bypass, but. I do take pro prebiotics every day. So, yeah. So that's important. Yeah. It's very important. 
And the other one that I heard is it could cause sort of dependence. Like people can uh, not be able to go on their own if they if they keep doing it constantly. So uh, there has been advice to sort of wean off of them as well, because you don't want to just cause immediate constipation. If you've been doing it every day or every other day, it, it is a possibility that you would be constipated. So just start. I would say it's it's fine to start spacing it out at this point. But if you continue yeah. to feel good, then keep doing it. Keep me updated. I guess that's the yeah. that's the magic phrase. If it's working, it's working. Yeah, my goal is to hopefully get down to like once a week. So, yeah. you know, as I I'm, I'm just sort of testing the waters and seeing. Like, do I feel okay at every other day? Like I I'm able to work out now, which is great. So we have our whole gym in, in the basement and I'm able to actually do a lot of things now. So I'm sort of testing my energy. Like, how do I feel? How's my inflammation? How are, you know, how's everything going? And then, um, I'll make adjustments each month and just kind of see, you know, how I do with all of it. So, but so far I like the every other day. It's working good. I feel like it's not too much. I do notice that if I skip um, two days, I get a headache from not having the caffeine. So I don't love that part because I don't drink caffeine like at all. Okay. Um, so that's the only downside to it is I do notice like if, if I go a couple of days, I start getting that headache and I'm like, oh, all right, there's got to be a way around that. So I'd like to wean off of it eventually and just do once a week. So I'm not getting that. You know, but I know in the beginning that, you know, doing it daily, you're getting your daily dose of caffeine straight into the blood. <laughs> so, you and know, they're actually it's a it's like a very light roasted beans, right? It's like special beans. You don't just use your regular instant coffee or whatever, right? Well, they make a, a whole bunch of different ones. So the very first kit I got was like they were green coffee beans. And then they didn't have those when I went to go get them again. So uh, I ended up with like a light tan roast. And now this is the first one that actually really looks like actual coffee. They're like, it's like, a, it says it's a medium roast. Um, but I'm, I've been having difficulty finding the one that I started off with, which is the one that I wanted to go back to. I liked the, the green, um, the green coffee beans, but I guess they all, I don't, I, I have a whole thing, so I'll use it because that, you know, they're not super cheap, but, um, but I'll see if I can go back into the other one where I feel like it wasn't as, as potent. But. So some people might not know that the lighter the roast, the more caffeine is in it, right? Dark roast is lighter. I actually didn't know that either. So yeah. So I, think I would have thought it was the other way around. Like a dark roast would have had more caffeine to me that that would have made sense, but I was there wrong. So yeah, you, you can, kind of get caffeine withdrawals yes caffeine is a drug and ev pretty much every coffee drinker knows if you've ever tried to stop it you probably will get headaches that's that's the thing so you can wean it down i don't know about using de decaf for uh enemas I'm, I'm not sure this is still this is still new to me but yeah, yeah in decaf available i would totally do it but I haven't seen decaf available. So, but if I do, I'll let you know. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think I only have one. Oh, I have two more questions. So I lost track of the timeline here, but I know it was recently that you told me about the worm thing. This is kind of the reason I, I said, okay, can we do the podcast? Because it's like, I think we've, we're reaching the final chapters of your story here. Well, not your life story, but this, this particular chapter of your life. And I, I think we're both glad to get it done. I don't I don't want people on my desk, by the way, right? Like the whole point of this thing is to help them. And then you shouldn't need us. You know, we teach you some stuff. You get, get you on a program. You stay on the program. Goodbye. <laughs> you know, just thank you. Have a good life, basically. Let me know if you have a relative that wants some help. So, yeah, I want to get these cases off my desk. And I'm hoping that this is this is the end of your chapter here. But how long were you doing those? coffee enemas exactly before the worms finally came out um so that was I, well i had been doing them daily so i was doing them during the fast so i had started doing them you must have started recommending them i don't know maybe it was my third my third week of doing them i maybe i don't know i just feel like that 14 days felt like it flew by and it was the longest 14 days of my life of doing the fast so it went by fast and then it didn't at the same time um, but I feel like you, you had just started recommending them. So I, I want to say it was my third week on them and it got really easy to do them without food. Um, so I didn't have to worry about doing, you know, the, the pre-evacuation cause I didn't have anything inside. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that, 
that happened on day 10 of the fast. So, but I, I think it had been about three weeks that I had already been doing the animas. Okay. I got one more question and one more comment. You said your maximum weight, you got up to around 209 pounds. Yeah. You're on your way down now. I am. Yes. I'm, I'm not where I want to be yet, but I've lost about 20. Well, I had lost originally a, like 11 or 12 pounds on carnivore and then just kind of teeter tottered with the, with the same five pounds. But January 1st, uh, I'd been keeping track of my weight since it all went up and January, every single year, since this all started, I was pretty much at the same exact weight. So I was really getting nowhere. Um, but I've lost 23 pounds since January 1st. So I'm down when I finished, uh, the fast and checked the other day, I was down to 169. So I'd like to get down back down to my fighting weight right around 140, 145 would be good, but I feel like I'm doing it now. I'm working out every day and I feel great. So I think it'll happen. The one before it didn't matter what I did, nothing was moving. So. And, and by the way, that's usually one of our easiest results too. You stop, stop eating processed foods. You get on the 90 and usually the weight just starts coming off. And that's even true if they don't get all their symptoms fixed, you know, might still have this or that, but usually the weight is, is not a problem. So yeah, it was a big weird thing when you're saying even fasting wasn't getting rid of the weight, had to really do some detective work here. Uh, congratulations on losing the weight, and I hope you get all the way down. I lied to you. I have two more comments. When we first spoke, you did not look good. You were tired, and this was like the middle of the day or the afternoon or something, and you looked tired and I, and kind of struggling to you, – you just didn't have energy. You didn't, didn't – you were speaking in kind of a droning kind of, you know, I'm just – I'm sick of this. And I, you look great. Thank you. Most people will be listening to this on audio, the vast majority of them. She looks great. What the heck? You look vibrant. You got life in your eyes. Your eyes are white, stark white. I can see them from here, bleach white. <laughs> like, Yeah, great. they were kind of yellowy, but not yellowy, but they were just sort of like off-white, I guess. They looked muddy or whatever you want to call it. Like I just, I remember sending you a picture of my eyes you had asked me to. So I kind of like, you know. And kind of just looked up and I was like, wow, they look terrible. Like everything just looked clogged, I guess. I don't know. But even a couple of my clients the other day said to me, what are you doing? You're glowing. Your and skin I, looks great. Yeah. I don't know. Castor oil and all that, getting all that guck out. So I just feel great. Very awesome. Yeah, that was another thing I forgot about. I took an iridology course. Just, I'm trying to figure out some of these weird cases. Like, okay, I, I already asked for fingernails. I guess I can ask for the eyes now and the mouth <laughs> and the tongue. I'm, I'm asking for tongues and stuff. There's a lot of clues around well, the body. My fingernails were changing shape and they've gone back to um, what they used to be. But when I was first, you had asked original, um, like to send pictures of my nails. And I was like, wow, my hands don't even look like my hands anymore. My nails were turning weird shapes and, getting deep ridges all over them. And, um, but they were like turning square, like instead of like a nice oval, like they were flattening out and just really doing some strange things. And now all that's all they're nice and strong again. And they've gone back to normal. So yeah, it was definitely a lot going on for sure. Very, very good. And usually before I knew anything about iridiology and I still don't really know much, I did an introductory course. I've had the one Oh two course sitting on my, I got to do it. I got to finish that one Oh two course. But just basically, I've known this for a long time. If you look at their eyes and they look cloudy, they look dull, they look yellow, they just just look at a person and see if they have life in their eyes. You can tell that there's an internal problem, obviously. So, yes, your eyes have, have basically completely changed, which yeah. is fantastic. The other comment that I wanted to make is just because you brought up the spike protein thing. I do not pretend to be an expert on this at all. I'd never heard of a spike protein before the pandemic. Most of us had never heard about a spike protein before. There was no such thing as MNRA or what, what vaccines. None of this existed. This is all 100% new to all of us. People have asked me 100 times, 1,000 times, to be honest. I've never given them a proper answer because I don't know the answer. But I hear I'm recommending to you. If, well, I think I already did recommend it to you. But to the audience in general, I'm not going to put this in the description because I'm afraid of getting punished on these platforms. It's a video on Rumble called The Antidote. It's two hours long. You must watch it. Blew my mind changed the way that I thought about what happened in 2020. And it was actually a doctor that recommended this to me. And I, I'm busy. I'm like, man, I don't really have two hours. Can you summarize it for me? He said, no, I'm not going to summarize it. 
I'm not going to spoil it. You have to watch it. Bug me. Kept bugging me to watch it. And I told everybody that I know about it in private. I won't put the link up on Instagram or anything like that. And it uh, blew a lot of people's minds. And I am not going to spoil it. But we have been uh, sharing the antidote, the video. And people come back and ask. They say, hey, so do you actually recommend that thing they talk about in the video? And I said, yes, I do. There's nothing to lose by trying it. It's a very simple thing they recommend, the antidote. And I had mostly good results with it. I just want to mention this. If people are concerned about spike protein or vaccine or whatever, whatever happened, you got sick with the thing, you've got lo you had long COVID or anything like that, you got to watch the antidote. And we've had two people where it actually didn't work. Nothing happened. But I think we've got about a dozen, maybe 14, 16 people that it, it actually did have a pretty amazing result with them. And it, even uh, kind of unexpected results, like uh, shockingly good results. So putting that out there, the antidote, it's not in the description. You have to go to Rumble. You will see it. It's two hours long. Watch the whole thing. It will blow your mind. So Amy... I don't want to let you get out of here without plugging what you do, because you actually have built up kind of a, a large following. And I really don't understand why you'll have to forgive me for that. <laughs> so you're you are a hairdresser, but I am you like it. You invented some new way of. No, I didn't invent anything. So I got back in 2016, 2017, this technique became really popular on uh, the social media scene. It was basically kind of on YouTube and it's called balayage and it's a hair painting technique that has been around for decades. I had never heard of it before then. Um, and it was just something like, I didn't really know how to do it as a hairdresser and started practicing. And I sort of developed um, my own placement and technique for it. And I got really well known for it. So pre pandemic, I was traveling all over the country and I had gone uh, internationally to do like a photo shoot with Schwarzkopf International for their essential looks campaign right before the pandemic broke out. So I had kind of exploded onto the Instagram scene for that technique. So my Instagram name contains that name balayage. So camouflage and balayage is my Instagram name. So yeah, it's just, it's just whatever. I mean, it changed my career, which was awesome, but it, it feels goofy to talk about now, especially like since all that stuff because i feel like it's not that big a deal anymore it used to be but then everything life just kind of happened and now it's like whatever i don't know i'm grateful but i have other things i want to do now <laughs> so well fair enough all of that will be in the description do you have anything else that would you would like to say here uh no i feel like we covered everything i just i always uh i try to plug you guys a few times a week on my stories because i know i've got a decent audience so um i just want people to know there's other solutions other than taking pills that are just going to cause other problems like to me when i got the initial diagnosis for scleroderma and i had done some research there was nothing they could do for it anyway so i was like well what what's the point of going that route if all they're going to do is give me medication that's going to cause other problems so because of that reason it really forced me to go that route but i probably would have done it anyway because i've just been so anti big pharma you know so um but i try to tell everybody i can about you guys and now I think it's easier now that I've had the results. Now people are like, well, what did you do? Who did you talk to? So I had put a whole thing up on my stories and I know at least 10 people that reached out to you and are contemplating like, do I want to go ahead with the protocol? One lady is a new client of mine. I haven't even done her hair yet. And she's sort of deciding if she wants to afford to get her hair done or do the protocols. And I was like, please do the protocols. Your hair is not that big deal. <laughs> like you need to feel better, you know? So um, but I just can't thank you enough for even just putting out that point that one day when you were like, if you're not getting a result, email me. Cause I wouldn't have, I wouldn't, I just don't like to be a pain. You know, I'm not that person that's like, please pay attention to me. You know, I'll just keep plugging away and try to figure something out on my own. So my sister was the one that saw that and she's like, who he said it. So email him. I said, I, I'm sending the email right now. So I just thank you so much. You giving me my life back. And I know this wasn't an easy case. I knew we could figure it out. So I'm so grateful. Thank you. Just awesome. thank you.
it, it wouldn't have worked without your attitude. You, you would have been long gone without the attitude that you have. And by the way, what you said, be a pain. You want to be a pain. I, I'm not a mind reader. I don't know. We've got a man well, right, right now who's uh, helping his wife. She had breast cancer. You know, she, we think she's on the other side of it. But sometimes this guy bugs me, man. He calls me. Hey, can I call you? You know, but it, I know it's the weekend. Can I call you? And send me messages. And it, you know, I can't really be mad at him. I would do the same thing if it was my wife. You know, bug us. Do it. Bug anybody. You know, he's. I've given him numbers of other people that I know in the bit. He's bugging them. And that's good. You should. You're taking responsibility. You're doing it. You know, there's a lot of people who are too shy, you know, or, or they might feel embarrassed or, or that, you know, we might be mad about it or something. They've been on the program. They haven't got the result. I'm mad if you don't contact me. I don't want to hear two years later that, oh, yeah, I tried it and it didn't work. What do you mean it didn't work? Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you right. tell me? Bug us. Do it. Take responsibility. Take it into your own hands. This is your life. And if the step one doesn't work, it usually does. If it doesn't, we're going to move on. We're going to look for things. I personally feel responsible if you're if you're with us. I don't think every single coach in the world believes that, but I feel bad if you don't get the result and I want to help you get the result. That's genuine. So what we're here for is what I'm here for. I was fixed by this program and by people who stuck with me. The the guy who fi finally I was resistant to it, by the way. I'm not going to go into my whole story, but I was on just the regular stuff. I was homeless, I was broke. I needed another product. The guy kept telling me you need the other. He bugged me. Yeah, I should have bugged him, but he bugged me. And I finally got it. Finally took it. Fixed me quick. Just saying, if the first thing doesn't work, don't throw the whole baby out with the bathwater. Let's go in and, and f figure it out. There is an answer somewhere. There has to be an answer somewhere. And this is for the vast, vast, vast majority of people. Some people are literally on their deathbed. And it might be that all we can do is give them a little bit, uh, some extra weeks of, of less pain and stuff. You know, there's some people who, you know, they're so bad, they're in the hospital, they can barely speak. And maybe the best we can do is get them, you know, sitting up in bed and having those last conversations with their loved ones. But it, chances are, if you're listening, that's not you. Chances are you still have a lot of life left. And we're here to help you crack the code. There is an answer. We will find it. All right. And I'm going to add one more thing to this that I might have suggested, I at least would have suggested looking into earlier in this case, because I didn't know anything about hydrogen water until relatively recently, but there's numerous studies on liver function, which turned out to be the thing that cracked her case open. So there's numerous studies showing a benefit for liver function. And when I just Googled hydrogen water and connective tissue, the first thing that came up was a article on the National Institutes of Health website that did also show a benefit to connective tissue, cartilage. I'm sure there's more, I'm just not gonna go fully into it here. I know I've gone a little bit long on some of these infomercials on hydrogen water, just saying that if we were looking at other powerful things that could possibly really dramatically affect a body that is very seriously compromised like this, I think hydrogen water would have been an option to at least explore. And I know the price point is much higher. We're talking $4,200 or $4,500, depending on the two machines that the Zontos Water Company currently has but I feel the need to at least mention it. I'm not prepared at this point to say, hey, you have to buy this hydrogen water machine, but you should look into hydrogen water in general. There's thousands of studies showing all types of benefits all throughout the body. And again, especially on the liver and in inflammation in general. Could it have helped? I don't know, but I do assume so, especially for serious cases. And anyone who really just wants to take things to the next level. She also mentioned that she's been having trouble sleeping still. Well, that should just be a nutrient deficiency, which we know her whole body wasn't really processing nutrients properly. That's why we didn't see much of a result. Hopefully she does start improving her sleep and all the rest of the symptoms that she has just completely disappears. But hydrogen water could have been one of those things that really accelerated that healing process. For me, it helped me sleep, right? My problem was EMF living here in the city suburbs half the time. I couldn't sleep half the time. Tried everything else. Nutrition's proper. I got all kinds of anti-EMF devices. A grounding mat for the bed helped. It did. It did. It just didn't help all the way. And I remember talking to Amy about her case and, you know, she lives kind of in the forest. So, you know, not next to a cell phone tower, not in a city. And there's been a few cases where I've kind of just said, okay, well, maybe EMF isn't really the problem, but it could be. You have electricity in the house, you have a Wi-Fi, you have phones, you know, we're speaking on the internet here. 
of course it could be a problem. I think she's taken the basic steps of reducing her EMF exposure, but for me, taking all the steps that I know of still didn't work to get me to sleep properly. Hydrogen water did. Now, I've gone on at length about this elsewhere, so I'm going to kind of cut it off here. You can look at the episodes that I've posted here on the podcast as well. A couple of videos to YouTube as well. And I'm going to keep mentioning it. Other people are talking highly of hydrogen water now as well. It's becoming a bit of a fad right now. I just want to let you know that if you are looking into hydrogen water, you should definitely consider the Zontos water machine. Why? Because they can prove that they have the highest PPM with the longest half-life, so that's the amount of hydrogen that's actually in the water for the longest time, and a machine that actually will perform for years or decades. They've got 14-year-old machines that are still performing like they were on day one, which is incredible for this type of a machine, because that's the biggest problem with other hydrogen water machines, especially the portable ones. They're a lot cheaper. You might see them for 60, 80 bucks, 100 bucks, but you get what you pay for. We've tested many of them and shown that they really don't perform. Sometimes as little as a week later, they don't perform at all. They got zero PPM or 0.1 PPM. That's not good enough. And definitely within a few weeks or a month, hardly any of these machines are performing at all. The hydrogen capsules are based in magnesium. You can't consume that much magnesium before you get diarrhea. So that's not your best option either, unless it's sort of an emergency. You're on your deathbed or something. Hopefully you don't leave it to that long. And that's why it's smart to get one of these machines ahead of time. I know it's a big investment. It was a big investment for me. It's the second most expensive thing I've ever bought, except for my house. But I expect to keep this machine with me and keep it functioning. I use it. The family uses it. The pets can use it. Unlike a normal supplement or liver flush, we can all share this machine once we've bought it. And there is payment options. I paid mine off over time as well. And I know the Zontos Water Company is very committed to maintaining their status as having the best machine on the market. Other people have been pitching me on other machines, showing me the specs, and none of them compare to the Zontos Water Machine. And many of them cost more, believe it or not. I know $4,500 sounds like a lot of money. It is a lot of money to me, but that's nowhere near the most expensive machines on the market, and those machines do not perform at the same level as a Zontos machine. If you know a better machine, you can send it my way. We can check it out. But we're not aware of anything that really comes close. And I'm glad Amy got her result without the hydrogen water, but I don't know how much better or faster it could have been or could still be yet. Check it out, zontoswater.com slash not us, lowercase. It's in the description as well, and you will hear me talk about it more in the future. And hydrogen water aside, guys, this episode was all about what we do for people. We give free health protocols. The information is free, the advice is free, our help is free. We do make money if you do buy the supplements that we recommend, but you get the food advice and you get anything else that's relevant to you. Most cases, I promise, are way easier than Amy's case. But if they do happen to be complicated, we are dedicated to helping you figure it out. If the coaches don't know the answer, they will come to me. If I don't know the answer, I will bring it up the chain all the way to Dr. Wallach and other doctors that I lean on for their advice when I don't know what to do. So in the description, you can find our contact page. You can reach out to any of our coaches. All of them are qualified to look over your questionnaire, which is also on the contact page. All of them are qualified to give you a starting protocol. And many of them are very qualified to take you all the way through. Some of them are more knowledgeable than me, to be honest. You've got nothing to lose by reaching out. And I said it earlier in the episode, if you have been on our program or taken any of our advice and have not gotten a result, reach out to me personally. That is also in the description. But if you're just getting started, reach out to one of the coaches. Amy, I appreciate you a ton. Thank you. I appreciate you as well. So I appreciate everybody for listening. As always, of course, remember that you can find everything that I do on my website, notusbooks.org, including all of our channels, you know, the Instagram and YouTube, all that stuff is in the description. For the audio people, you got to know, I've been posting the videos as well to YouTube and to Rumble and to Patreon. Actually, everything goes on Patreon. All the podcast episodes go on Patreon as soon as they're done, which is one week, at least one week early for podcast land, unless I'm really on top of things like I am right now. So right now, episodes are going up several weeks early on Patreon. We also put our weekly Zoom meetings on Patreon. And those Zoom meetings are where we talk about a lot of this difficult type of stuff. We go into the nitty gritty about specific diseases and products. And we do a case study there every week, especially the tough cases. We got to study the tough cases. 
And you can actually participate in the Zooms for free if you want, but a lot of people can't make it, so you can always watch them on Patreon later. It's only $1.99, you get access to all the content that's there. Even some videos that exist nowhere else and some stuff that's been taken off of YouTube. All of that is on the Patreon. And of course, we appreciate the support. Also on my website, notusbooks.org, you can find an archive of this podcast. You can download the episodes there for free. And actually, if you listen to the archive version all the way to the end, there's a special treat at the very end. So those who are listening on the, on the archive right now, stick around after I sign out for the special treat. There, of course, you can also find the books that I've written and helped publish and the free audiobook versions of those books, both on YouTube and podcast. You can find all the links on notusbooks.org. Amy, thank you once again. Thank everybody else. Stay healthy, my friends. Until next time. Thanks, Ryan.